In this video, we are going to answer a data analysis process question. Here's the question. So Ellen, could you please tell me about a project where you have to clean and organize a large data set? So when I first joined Uber way back in the day, uh, my first project that I actually worked on was building a customer segmentation uh, data set. Essentially, the challenge was we knew who our customers were. We knew what they were ordering. But the only problem with that is that the only identification we have is a customer ID, ordering trends, and potentially a credit card number on file that we don't really actually have access to. But the biggest thing there is that we knew nothing about them on who they were, what they believed in, what drove them to order a little bit more. One of the things that we thought about initially was doing a lot of surveying and uh, quality of analysis. But as we started to scale, that wasn't feasible. So what we wanted to do was find a way where we can actually leverage our first party or our internal data, uh, those ordering trends, those behaviors that we do see on our app, mixing that with third party data that we could actually go up to, aka demographic data as well. So we found a, bar, a vendor that was actually able to kind of give us demographic information based off of a specific location. What we didn't want to do was go, me as a person, I know exactly who I am. That data one is very, very hard to obtain and it'd be very, very expensive. So we thought about aggregating up to the postal coders at code level as well too. One of the biggest key assumptions that we actually went with was the saying was uh, the birds of the same feather flock together essentially. So we were running with the assumption that people who live close to each other have very similar values, similarities, demogra uh, demographic lifestyles, AKA household income, number of kids. Uh, the area, for example, that I live in is very young families and people who are looking at building, buying their first homes as well too. So using this data, what we wanted to do was marry this with our first party data to kind of go, these people are young families and they want to kind of uh, use Uber Eats, for example, as a means to uh, cut time out of their day so they can focus on things that are a little bit more important. For me, it's raising my son, for example. Uh, the problem with that is that our data never really spoke to each other in in a very clean and sophisticated manner as well. We had postal code data. The only problem was that sometimes the uh, data would be spitting out instances where it would be invalid. This is not a postal code. This is just something that uh, they had just filled in in terms of the type form. There would be a space sometimes. So those first three digits versus space and then the last three digits as well too versus the demographic data, no spaces as well too. So I think before we even started to clean up the data, we had to understand what we had to work with, what would be our key matching condition between those two data sets. One, it would be the postal code. And then two, just ensuring that we are removing things that we didn't want to be part of the analysis. So employee accounts, test accounts on top of this. Uh, ensuring that we are actually looking at sizing, what is the impact of these records that we're actually going to be cutting out as well? Uh, for me, the sweet spot was under 2%. So let's say we had 100 customers that we were looking at cleaning. As long as we're only able to remove like not only about 2% and not 50% of the data, we were good to go too. I think for me, it's just establishing those requirements on what are the pieces of data we wanted to clean up? One of the things that we're going to be checking for from like an Eric use case perspective, and then just starting to understand how do we actually clean this up on top of this? Do we do manual Excel files? Do we work with our data engineering team to kind of build out our preliminary models in terms of the way we were ingesting this data via their APIs as well. Uh, me as a data analyst wouldn't be the ones writing those like models, but for me, it would be stating, this is what we actually need to do to clean up the data. We called them standardization. We figured out ways to think about, okay, when we do zip code or postal code, this is the format it should be looking like. Emails, for example, should always contain an at sign. So a lot of these laundry list of requirements was my job and responsibility to kind of communicate to the team before we started the data cleanup as well too. And then once the data was ingested, I would be going in and doing the QA or the validation to ensure that this is the data that we want before we can actually start doing any of the insight or analytics moving forward. I think the cool part about that too is like once we were in a good spot, we can actually start thinking about bringing in that third party demographic data. So now me as a customer, I know how many times I ordered on Uber Eats. I know what my demographic assumptions are in terms of the area that I live in and what I believe in, for example. This allowed me to kind of share with the team a very clean catch-all data set as well too. So Lean, so to your point, it's like, I didn't have any insights right now. We don't have any segmentations done. We have a data set and a blank canvas for me to do my work. 
And a lot of the effort that just went on in terms of that data cleanup allowed us to get to a spot where one, things were very accurate. Two, it allowed us to kind of ensure that there wasn't going to be any issues with false data or leading us down a path where we are building up personas on uh, bad data. I think the saying is like garbage in, garbage out too. So we want to get away from that as much as possible. And then three, just making sure that one, this is repurposable. Yes, I built this for segmentation, but I wanted to think a little bit ahead and feature proof this data set. So our driver ops team, our courier ops team can actually use this for specific use cases on how do we actually get more people to deliver for Uber Eats on top of that versus my, for me just building a singular model because one, data is very hard to come by sometimes and then making sure that we can repurpose things would be like an absolute win in my eyes. Amazing. I really like the part that you're thinking about sustainability and also making sure the ROI for our money invested in collaborating with data vendor are really worth spending. I do have a quick question for you. Can, can you just guide me through a little bit more? So I'm assuming there is like the it's internal data where you have the user probably like ordering information and you're thinking of uh, like the, the example you share was like the third party data where you have the uh, zip code, geographic information and with additional kind of characteristic of that household, right? I assume. Yes. Got it. And you're merging it based on the unique identifier ideally will be the, the zip code information. Yeah. So an, an, a good, another example of like data cleanup, I don't want to bring it like if this was just Canada, for example, I would not want to bring in postal code or zip codes from the US or Mexico, essentially. And remember I told you about that 2% of like outlier matching? Let's say like my number went to 30%. That could be because a lot of the joins weren't matching because they were not Canadian yeah. as well too. So ensuring that like we had a good base to start the analysis before we start thinking about bringing those two data sets together was like super important to me. Mm, amazing. And also just wondering, uh, after you cleaned the data, were it merged, like what all the work was done on the Excel or did you actually or work with data engineer to build a table for future joints? Like, can you describe a little bit more about how was that done? Yeah, I think the prototyping was done in Excel. I think in order to save the resources and time of our engineering team, I would build out, this is what it could look like in a very scrappy Excel model. One, it saved us a lot of time. And two, it also time, but also saved a lot of headache on aligning on this is what the output should look like, essentially. By me going into Excel and doing uh, preliminary transformations or analytics and then just showing what the end outcome could look like and mocking that up for a team, allowed them to kind of get that alignment and that aha moment. This is what it should look like when I start doing my work moving forward versus just going through multiple iterations and passes as well. I think as a data analyst, my job is to make their lives a little bit easier. Obviously, I'm not there to replicate their work or do their job for them. And trying to understand what are the right swim lanes we can actually go in between was like the big thing for me. Absolutely. And just dive deeper into your uh, the process of the cleaning and everything. Like, were, were, if, if you could recall, like, was there any moment of unexpected either error or when you join the data, there are things that just doesn't really align with your expectation, like anything that was surprised to you? Yeah, I mean, I think duplicates was the big one where mm -hmm. may, like initially when I had done this, maybe our customer records were not unique in the sense. So a lot of these assumptions that came in, it's like we thought of just getting one row of, is equal to one unique customer. Uh, we didn't really think about an accounting about there might be multiple rows of the same customer different IDs, like the same email might belong to the different ID as well too. So how do we actually think about validation checking? How can I actually start thinking about additional pieces of audit? So using window functions such as like row number is a good example where based off of criteria of like your first ever ordering timestamp, making sure that we were removing those records down the line too. Uh, you're, I think for me, like a, a good lesson learned, I'm not going to get it right always on the first go. How do we actually start thinking about being very agile and then adding on additional layers of like complexity or QAing on top of this and then being flexible on how the end product should look like? I think to me, it's giving myself some flexibility to ensure that these changes are going to occur. And then just making sure that I'm communicating this with my stakeholders who I am helping build out this data set as well. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this example. Thanks for watching. Next, let's do a quick reflection and review of what the candidate just shared for this question. 
So this question is about tell me about a project where you had to clean and organize a large data set. This question usually show up when the interviewer assess your ability to clean data or manipulate data, eventually to drive certain business results or business insights. In this case, the candidate did a great job of sharing the context of what was the business problem. So it really showcased that the candidate understand the business context before jumping into data analysis, which is one of the key criteria and quality that data analytics team are looking for, especially in big tech company. In addition, the example that the candidate shared was relatively complex, where it touched upon not only the first party data, but also merging with the third party data. This type of project is something is unique as well as it showcasing the candidate's ability to deal with not only large data set, but also complex data structure. So it's a great example that we can bring into this type of interview. Something you wanted to consider when you are sharing this type of examples in your interview is to also reflect on the end result a little bit more. Although this question is about assessing your ability throughout the data analysis process, the interviewer might also want to get a sense of what was the outcome and the end result. You might want to share something like, in the end, we're able to have this insight of X, Y, Z, or in the end, we learned that this process or this type of data were able to use in future data analysis or not be able to use in future data analysis. Any learnings or result will be perfect to add on when you share this type of example. So thank you so much, Alan, for answering this question. And thank you to everyone who is watching. If you are enjoying this interview, please make sure you visit our full data analytics interview preparation course at tryexponent.com. Good luck on your next interview and thanks for watching.